Thank you, Kavisha. Hi, everybody. Kubernetes is a unique beast which consists of a multi-layered web of resources and services. Achieving observability is a daunting task, even for the best and brightest among us. This presentation will give you a high-level overview and some implementation approaches to achieve observability in Kubernetes. So let's first look into what is observability. Uh, to understand observability, uh, the observability as well as monitoring is used interchangeably. Uh, although there's a subtle difference between them, while observability actually talks about the ability of internal um, uh, to assess the internal system state based on the data it provides, monitoring deals with the collection and analysis of data pulled from the infrastructure. So observability will help you to gain deeper insight to health and status of different application and resources across infrastructure. This helps to proactively detect uh, abnormalities, uh, analyze and uh, analyze issues and resolve them. So the three pillars of obs observability are logs, metrics and traces. I will discuss that in later. Um, let's move into the uh, monitoring. So the foundation of observability is monitoring, which involves pulling and analyzing data from your infrastructure. So uh, the uh, it started with SNMP, the simple network protocol since back in two, uh, 1988, where we used to get information about the network, say for example, like every 10 seconds or 30 seconds. Now there are much more newer protocols available such as the open config, uh, GPR, G GRPZ network management interface protocol that can provide much more real time information. Okay, telemetry and a APM application performance monitoring also a uh, type of monitoring. It's a bit advanced uh, type of monitoring, especially uh, telemetry focuses on collecting information from distributed system while the APM is focuses on more application level. Uh, let's look at what are the different types of um, uh, levels of Kubernetes monitoring. So there are two types of um, uh, Kubernetes uh, monitoring available, two levels of Kubernetes monitoring available. One is the cluster level, which focuses on the node information, the pod information, and the cluster resource level utilization. And the pod level focuses more on the container level, uh, especially on the application as well as the container level information. Okay, let's see why, why this um, uh, monitoring is so important. So in cloud native or microservices, apps are very complex and you got a lot of moving parts. When an issue occurs, it's very difficult to pinpoint and identify the issue. So monitoring is important for uh, reliability as well as troubleshooting. Secondly, knowing your um, infrastructure uh, will help you to optimize your hardware. Thirdly, Public cloud, if you are using a public cloud infrastructure, you will play a the cost will play a major role. So having insights into the Kubernetes environment will help you to reduce the co uh, cloud spending. Some instances, you may be using Kubernetes in a multi-tenant or you are providing it to your internal customers. So in that case, having insights will help you to charge back or show back to your internal customers. Finally, Observation, uh, observability is actually a cornerstone for your security strategy. So you will be able to identify any malicious uh, ingress and uh, egress traffic or any unwanted pods and services that is running in your environment. All right, so there are some challenges that comes through with this um, observability as well. So one is the amount of data. So you get data from your um, uh, nodes, you get data from your pods, the uh, flow data, so much of data that you have to manage. And uh, uh, secondly, you ha you also have difficulty because it's a, a distributed system, you have so many moving parts. Uh, getting this full picture also is a, a bit of a challenge that you will face as well. Uh, finally, you will, because um, Kubernetes is a declarative in nature, you can actually define how it's uh, how you want the pods to run and create it. So that actually might give a false positive, especially when it comes to performance. All right, so the best practices, when it comes to best practices, firstly, the granular resources like the CPU, memory, load, those things are very important, but can be very complex and convolute, convoluted. So to easily identify the microservice issue, the API metrics are the main part. 
So what you can use is like the request rate, the call error, uh, latency that will help you to quickly identify the degrading components in your microservice. Another aspect is the high disk usage. So that's a very common um, um, uh, common uh, issue that you will come across. So there's no like a straight away uh, magical solution. You just make sure, you know, when it hits about 70 to 80 percent of your storage, notify it, take some actions. Right. So even though uh, the user experience, end user experience is not built into Kubernetes, it's also most very important and a best practice to understand and monitor end users experience and the ad and address issues so that the ex end user will can provide you positive feedback as well and if you are running in uh, public cloud you have to make sure you uh, adhere to the best practices of the cloud in terms of access and identity cost network performance etc all right let's get back to the three pillars of observability uh, as i mentioned it's very important uh, when you create and implement your observability for Kubernetes. So for the first pillar is a logs. Uh, the log, basically a log is a representation of a discrete event. In most cases, it describes what will happen with your service. Log will produce in multiple ways in Kubernetes especially. So you will have cluster related log, you will have pod related logs, you will have application related logs, network and all that. So you have to have a mechanism to collect all these logs and push it to a central analytic server. Uh, second pillar is a metrics. So metrics is a numerical representation of data measured over a period of time. Say for example, how many uh, 200 requests did I get in last 30 seconds? And um, the last one is the tracing. Tracing is a mechanism that will help you to uh, track end to end end to end and identify so your whole transaction you can manage end to end. you can track it end to end and identify troubleshoot the issue all right so let's look at a sample of purpose built observ observability platform for kubernetes so this one we have three layers so the but the first layer is the telemetric collection so this is where you collect various flows and different data and the second layer will give you the analytic and visibility where the different anal analysis can be performed. So you could even um, uh, put some machine learning, uh, machine learn anomaly detection, and finally on the security and troubleshooting layer. Tools for implementing Kubernetes um, observability includes, first, at the bare minimum, uh, you can have Kubernetes dashboard. Kubernetes dashboard will you give you a bare minimum information about the deployment of application into pods, application running in pods, issue this application running in the pods, resource utilization. So that this can be used as a bare minimum observability tool. Um, secondly, Prometheus is a collection and storage of observability data. So it provides you with a multidimensional data model with time series format. And it provides also provides a query language called PromQL to analyze. Further, uh, several modes can be av are available with different types of graphs as well as dashboards. Uh, Prometheus can be integrated with many other things like the Grafana and all that as well. So um, on, on Grafana side, it will give you a visualizing observability data. So it, uh, Grafana gives you a data rich dashboard and uh, using information sources like the Prometheus, like I just mentioned. And it also provides you built-in dashboards for Kubernetes, like uh, actually four dashboards. One is the cluster dashboard, node dashboard, pod and, pod and container dashboard, as well as the deployment dashboard. Uh, further, Grafana has a few more um, plugins that, uh, for example, Grafana Loki also can give you a similar um, observability to your Kubernetes um, uh, environment. And um, Jaeger is a uh, distributed system uh, tracking uh, tracing system for Kubernetes. Uh, they actually came from uh, Uber's engineering team. It gives you end-to-end -end tracing solution. So it uh, helps you to monitor troubleshoot transactions in a complex distributed system and help you to identify the root causes as well as optimize uh, performance and latencies and monitor distributed transactions as well. 
further finally the elastic stack uh, elastic stack includes elastic search which is the uh, analytical engine and uh, log stash and uh, beats uh, captures and uh, sends the log to elastic search and kibana you can use it to um, get the dashboards you can also uh, drop log stash and beats and combine it with something like a fluent then you get a efk a stack which also will give you a, um, um, a stack for you to uh, uh, implement your observability in kubernetes with that um, because of the scale of modern um, infrastructure and the dynamic nature of kubernetes observability is a critical component and the three pillars i have mentioned you that is the log metrics tracing will not only help you to increase the observability but also help you to gain insights to your infrastructure regardless of your technology set that you use the tools mentioned here are the de facto standard tools used by the cloud native community and implementing them will help you to gain observability in your kubernetes environment thank you and have a pleasant day